Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Amon Johnson, aka from Meathead to Meatless on YouTube. And today we're going to be talking about his amazing journey, how he achieved such an impressive physique, and yeah, veganism, raw veganism, health, fitness, you name it. <laughs> and yeah, Amon is currently sitting at around like 225 pounds, uh, I think like 226, and he's six foot four tall. I'll put on screen now his physique, like it's really impressive and he's been vegan almost eight years now and he found raw veganism a couple of years ago and he's still been building muscle um staying shredded so he's dispelling a lot of myths especially the protein myth um but yeah without further ado i mean how did you let's start with veganism how did you find like veganism like nearly eight years ago well first thank you for having me i'm honored to be here this is my second interview ever so uh and my last one was a few weeks ago so i went from no interviews and I started doing this just to to show people something and to now I have like all these interviews lined up and I'm like wow okay this is you know but hey I'm just going to talk to as many people as I can and get it out there you know to as many people as I can um, but to answer your question so I found veganism first in 2010 I had like a spiritual awakening to use the cliche term and um, and through that I found, I don't even remember exactly how it happened anymore, but it was someone on YouTube and um, they, were eat, they were eating like a raw vegan meal. It was a bunch of fruit. It was like a, a platter of fruit. I'd never seen anything like it. And it looked so beautiful and vibrant and colorful. And I was like, that's how we're supposed to eat. And I was like, I'm going to eat like that. And so I knew one day then that I would do it. I didn't know what raw veganism was. And so I didn't know what they were doing, but I knew that that was the way to eat, just intuitively. It made sense. So mm. yeah, that's how I found it. And um, and then it wasn't, that was in 2010, but in 2017, I actually made the switch. So it took me seven years, but I got there. Mm. Awesome. And yeah, I forgot to say for anyone who doesn't know, um, you're currently 38, so nearly 40. Oh, yeah. And yeah, when, I remember when I first saw you, I thought you were like 25 or something. <laughs> so, yeah. And I have kids too. That's the crazy thing. They say once you have kids, it ages you. But, but yeah. How old are your kids? Because they're, they're quite and, old. I uh, was 16 and 12. So they're wow. yeah, up there. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's obviously not aging you. So that's amazing. Yeah. So yeah, you no. started with a vegan diet. And did you notice like any, any changes in your physique, in your energy, any kind of physical or mental changes when you switched to vegan? Very much so. So <laughs> when I first went vegan, I got so gassy for like a week. <laughs> Just the beans, all the beans. Mm. And so I got super gassy and and I didn't know what I was doing. So I was eating, you know, the junk food. I was eating frozen foods. Like, the I don't know if you guys have it there, but like the corn brands and the guardian. Yeah, yeah. And the, all that kind of stuff. So I was eating a lot of that. I was eating the Beyond B a lot. And I was just thinking, okay, instead of chicken, I'm going to have this. And this has X amount of protein. So I was just replacing like one for one. And my physique was good. It stayed good. But that, so that was in January. That winter, I got the flu like four times. And so I was like, oh my God. And I was eating so much processed food. It was like, all processed everything was processed and so then when i got sick four times in a row like the fourth time i was like i can't do this you know i was like something has to change so then that's when i made the switch to whole foods and then it was a whole foods plant-based diet and once i did that i didn't get sick again for five years you know and so mm. i was like okay perfect but uh yeah my physique at first it, it just continued to improve and, and except for the initial bloating, which went away quickly, but it, it continued to improve. And um, and then I would say it took, like I lost some size because I went more into fasting and, and you know, eating like watermelon for a meal, which you just can't get that many calories because it's so much water. But I didn't care because I wanted to go more into the, you know, I wanted to do it for health, right? So I took a step back with my, physique which ended up being good because i lost probably 15 pounds of muscle and then i built it back as a vegan right so i i went into fasting and so on for like a year or two and then um and then after that i was like okay it's time to build so that i i built everything back you know and i've gotten back now where i'm 
stronger than before and um, I gain weight easily as long as I'm not too busy if I can like eat if I can sit and eat then you know it's it's just as easy for me except I feel better now so I used to have chronic inflammation in my knees from all the years of, of lifting weights you know and on a vegan diet that went away within a couple of weeks it was just gone you know mm, awesome. so yeah yeah so yeah you haven't died of a protein deficiency yet not yet no I think I'm still I think I'm still doing all right so <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah so then what made you go raw vegan like or or at least um you know incorporate more raw foods like a couple of years ago yeah so i'm trying to get the first well that was my first impression was was the raw foods right mm -hmm. and i think it just it called to me intuitively to eat you know living food it's so it looks so good it looks so vibrant and it makes sense to me because i'm a, like a really i'm a thinker so when I see every other animal eating raw food, they're not, they don't cook their food. Every animal on the planet doesn't cook their food, you know, and we do. Then I'm like, okay, that's a little bit weird. And if you just think about it, it's like if food is raw, it's going to have more life force. You know, if you cook it and it's dead, it's, it's not right. So, I mean, there was just, it was like an intuitive kind of a thing. Hmm. Yeah, awesome. And what did you know? Did you remember like what you noticed when you did like fully raw days compared to just like a standard vegan diet? I just feel better. I mean, the sh the short of it is I feel better. There's we can go into the specifics, but I feel better. I sleep better. Um, I like life better. <laughs> I'm more creative. You know, it's it's just better. Everything is better. Damn. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. If assuming that I do it right, right, if I don't have any ripe fruit, it can get rough. And I'm like, OK, I, you know, I have to make sure. And now I plan for that appropriately. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. Yeah. So you're in L.A., right? Five. Yeah. So what, what's like the fruit like typically? Sorry. So I mean, it depends where you're at exactly. I don't have a farmer's market too close, but it's standard if you're in a city. It's like, you know. There's the, the basics, the Cavendish banana, which is my least favorite, but it's it's the most available. Yeah. There's um, they there are apples, you know, there are um, pears usually available. Um, right now, peaches are pretty good. There's papaya. There's one place where I get good papayas, and that's Sprouts. Um, we have grapes. They're all seedless. I prefer the seeded, but um, but they have those. Um, and then there's frozen fruit, you know, so it's not, and there's watermelon too, but it's not super plentiful, but there's, you have more than enough of what you need. So, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. So like people might be wondering like, what, what does a, uh, like typical day of eating look like? So obviously you've got that big frame, you've got an amazing physique. So like, yeah, what, 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 uh, talk us through like a, a typical day of eating. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Typical day is, is, um, and it, it could change, right? Cause I get. I'm like a creature of habit, so I'll eat the exact same thing for yeah, same. who knows how long. And then I'll be like, I'm tired of it, and I'm going to change it. And um, and I'll do that for like six months or something. But but right now, it looks like I, I don't eat in the morning, right? So I, I don't eat until the afternoon. Um, so I intermittent fast, and it's, yeah, there are some health benefits, but I do it out of convenience, I'll be honest. You know, it's, it's really just out of convenience. Um, so I do that. And then um, whenever I do it, I eat a smoothie. It's pretty much always a smoothie. And that's going to have water. It's going to have freshly ground blacks or chia. And I'll get like two tablespoons of that. And that's just to get my omega-3s. And then I'll do um, like today was bananas and peaches. And so I just had like some frozen bananas and I had some peaches. And I'm like, let me throw those together. And uh, But it could be, you know, mangoes. It could be... Um, and berries. I usually have berries. Like blueberries, I eat a lot of wild blueberries. They're my favorite. Um, so just like a smoothie. And then lunch will be maybe like today I had some dates. Um, what else did I have? I had, oh, I have greens with every meal. So first meal I have fruit and I'll have greens. And the greens are for my protein. Right? But not just my protein, but my minerals. So people think you need to add the protein powder. And I did that for a long time. But I'm actually right now. Um, experimenting, so to speak, and with really low protein um, by most people's standards. And so I'm having no protein powder. 
I'm not eating a bunch of nuts and seeds. Um, so I'm having greens. I'm having greens. I'm having sprouts. So with that first meal, I had arugula. That's my favorite green. I know it's weird, but I love it. <laughs> and then uh, and then I had uh, lunch today was it was lunch. Oh, you know what? I had another smoothie and I had some dates. And then I had more arugula. So that was lunch. It's really simple, I know. Um, and then dinner will be sushi. I'll have sushi. And the sushi will be like nori sheets with cauliflower rice, um, lemon juice. And then I'll cut up a bunch of vegetables and cucumbers and red bell peppers. And I'll have some coconut aminos and I'll dip it in, in that. That'll be my lunch. That plus a huge salad, like a, a big bowl um, salad. And then I'll have some blueberries. So that's my dessert. <laughs> And, uh, and then I'll have, what else will I have? I'll have some hemp seeds. I'll have about six tablespoons of hemp seeds and maybe a few walnuts as well. Mm. So, yeah, awesome. Yeah. So how many calories roughly um, does it take to maintain or build muscle in your physique? Close to 4,000 for me. Yeah. Yeah. To, well, yeah. to build like 4,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least. So, yeah. I think yeah. that's the thing. People underestimate how much you need to eat. Cause like right yeah. now I'm eating like three and a half thousand calories and I'm only, wow. you know, like I'm only 160. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm not, I'm not getting fat. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's amazing once you eat like clean foods. Um, yeah. Yeah. And what about your yeah. protein? Um, yeah. How, how much are you roughly hitting at the minute? Uh, I agree with you, by the way. It's like, it's, it seems like the, with the raw foods and fruits specifically, you can eat more calories and stay lean. Cause it's, I mean, some girls eat, almost as much as I do on the, on the raw diet, which is crazy. But, uh, but protein, I mean, if I had to guess, I don't count it. It's not something that I'm, I'm consciously seeking. Um, but if I had to guess, it's around like 60, 80 grams, maybe. Wow. And it's really low. Yeah, it's yeah. really low. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel in terms of like recovery from training? Have you noticed any difference, high protein versus low protein or? I feel better with lower protein. If I take like protein powder, I can feel like when you get to a certain point, you can feel the subtle differences in your body. So I can feel mm. the acidity of it. I can feel like I can taste my spit and, and it's just more acidic. It's a little bit more acidic. Mm. And, um, so you, if you can really notice these subtle things like you'll, you'll see it, but I just feel better without the protein. Yeah. Mm hmm absolutely yeah. yeah yeah also like with the urine as well like when you um pee like that's you can, right i can smell that i can protein. smell it too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. definitely yeah awesome and what what's your like training split look like so i've heard you say like four days a week in the past mm -hmm. but yeah what, what does that look like because a lot of people think you need to be training like three hours a day to get a that's right. body but yeah not even close not even close yeah um <laughs> i don't know who has time for that you know uh, I train, I train four days a week. It's two days on one day off, two days on two days off. And it looks like it's chest triceps and abs on the first day, back biceps and forearms on the second day, then cardio on all the rest days. But my cardio is usually dancing. So I have, I have my sons and we just dance with like a dancing party, <laughs> Nice. <laughs> but I'm talking like at the end of it, we're covered in sweat. So it's, it's, yeah. like we're going for it. Um, and then the next day I work legs and the next day I work, yeah, just legs, like calves, my entire legs. And then the, ne the next day I work shoulders, abs, and then forearms again. And then I take two days off and that's, those are cardio days. Um, and that's, yeah, that's it. And each of those workouts take like the chest and tricep workout takes an hour 15. The back and bicep workout takes an hour 15, hour 20. And then legs takes about an hour max, if that. And then my shoulder workout takes about an hour. So I'm working out about four hours, a little bit, maybe slightly more a week. And that's it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's really not as much as people would think. Like, it's amazing. Not okay. even close. What, what time of day do you train? Because, like, for people who don't know, it's currently, like, past midnight right now. That's um, right. Yeah. Not, yeah. not at night. Not at night. Never. Yeah. <laughs> but wherever I can fit it in, you know, as long as it's not, whether it's in the morning or the afternoon, as long, I don't have like a fixed time because it just varies from day to day, but never close to bed because if you train close to bed, it, it makes it harder to sleep. So, which yeah. I've done before, I know. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I yeah. remember that with football or like soccer for people in the States. Like, yeah. You'd play a game at like ten o'clock at night, and you you You're wouldn't be able to, to sleep for hours. Nah, the adrenaline, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. 
Yeah. yeah. And you mentioned like dance, a um, bit random, but what, what kind of music do you like dancing to? I mean, it could be hip hop, it could be EDM, um, yeah. anything else. Yeah, probably usually, well, it could be R&B, hip hop, R&B, EDM, any yeah. of those. If it has yeah. a good beat, you know, then yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got to be upbeat. It's got to like, be a yeah, how, yeah. how, house music or yeah, EDM yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Awesome. That's all good. Yeah. And I'm curious, um, like when you transitioned or, or started in, um, incorporating more raw foods, how did you feel? Like, because a lot of people say detox symptoms or like, yeah, digestive issues. Did you notice dude, much? Dude, I didn't get any of that. Like nothing. I mean, I'm, I'm not coming from being the most unhealthy. Like some people had diseases and came to this lifestyle. I didn't have that. Um, but I did have inflammation. I had chronic inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, I just feel better. I just felt better. Um, but I never, I never had any detox symptoms. No, I can't say that I, I don't think I ever had. I mean, if mm -hmm. I have, then I chalked it up to something else. So maybe I have, but not that I'm aware of. But by the time I went raw, before I was even vegan, I ate whole foods 90% of the time probably 95% of the time. And then I went vegan and then I was eating junk for a few months. And then I started eating all, all whole foods. And then I went raw from there. So it was kind of like a, and I went raw when I first went raw, it was like, it was so nasty, dude. It was like, I didn't really know how to go raw. So I was like, I gotta get my protein, you know? So I sprouted like uh, lentils and I would have like a ton, like two cups of sprouted lentils. Oh. And wild rice, I would, you know that you could put like wild rice in water and then put it in the dehydrator for 24 mm -hmm. hours? Yeah. Well, I would do that and it'll bloom and that's actually pretty good. But that's what I would eat for like almost every meal, you know, just to try to get my protein. So <laughs> that's so. Yeah. <laughs> no, we all, we all do it at the start. We all do it at the start. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. super high fat, like loads of nuts and seeds and things. Mm. Yeah. How'd you feel on that? On fat? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I feel like there's there's a delicate balance. I think somewhere from like ten to twenty percent is probably good for most people. Yeah, um, I think so too. Yeah, where, where do you sit on fat? I again, I don't, I never count macros, but it's somewhere around ten to twenty percent. Mm -hmm. So any higher than that, it's like I just get sluggish. You know, too yeah. much fat, I get sluggish. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I also think there's issues with like super low fat because I did that approach for a while, but I, I feel like your skin suffers and and I did yeah. that too, by the way, for a long time actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. how, how did you feel on like super low fat i felt good for a while you know and then after a little bit i there were some things energy issues hormonal i'm not sure that they were hormonal issues i don't know for sure but mm -hmm. but there were some energy issues like big time energy issues and i bumped up the fat and that changed yeah yeah definitely because because we do need a certain amount of fat just for ourselves and like you say hormones skin that's right yeah, yeah. i think if yeah. you're eating like three pounds of greens a day you maybe don't need to go seek mm -hmm. out fat but nobody's doing that so no no yeah. unless they're yeah. like a gorilla or something <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> shoveling yeah. it in yeah, yeah. How, how do you feel so you said you had like greens with um your smoothie or whatever is that like separate oh uh, yeah i'll have it so you know i tell myself i'm gonna put it in sometimes but i never do i never <laughs> yeah, yeah don't want to ruin the taste yeah i'm like i don't know how it'll taste and arugula is like super strong flavor so I don't do it so just mm -hmm. separate mm -hmm. yeah so have you ever been like all fruit because i initially went all fruit at the start but i Did definitely really? think green yeah i think greens are, are very beneficial i think i've done i've probably done like 90 percent fruit um but not for long not for long i know mm. whenever i did i was low fat at that time and i felt really really good for a short time you know it was like euphoria mm. yeah. It was like, it felt like when they describe a food cleanse, how they feel, I, that's what I was feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I totally get that. I think because you're not intaking a lot of other foods, you feel so much better, but then, yeah, yeah like you say, it's, it's kind of like, I don't think it's sustainable long term. I don't think so. Either. Yeah. So, um, oh, what was I going to say? I was going to say one thing about, um, is that, is that a helicopter? It's a helicopter. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all good. LA. <laughs> They're coming for you for busting the protein mess <laughs> it's, <a good> <laughs> it's all good we'll let that pass <laughs> okay. 
it's just me quickly jumping in to share that if you want to build lean muscle and you want to lose some excess body fat, then you're very welcome inside my free community. Now, I'm not a 225 pound beast, but I am gaining muscle at a rate of about one pound per week. And I'm sharing all my tips, my eBooks inside here. And it's a very supportive community uh, where people are getting their questions answered and everyone's thriving on the journey towards their health goals. So yeah, if this resonates with you, I'll leave it in the description and enjoy the rest of the video. Peace and love. Oh man, what was I gonna say? I was, yeah, I was gonna say about the greens. I think um, just from a, like a micronutrient standpoint, do you feel like it's essential? Um, obviously you wanna build muscle and things. Do you feel like yeah. the, eating a lot of greens is like essential for having a physique like yours? I, I mean, I'll say that I do. Um, I think, I mean, you don't have to eat necessarily a lot of greens because you could eat a lot of sprouts. Yeah. Um, but I think if you just do, if you do like all fruit or something like 90%, something like 90% fruit, I think it, in my experience, my physique did suffer, um, mm -hmm. over time, you know, so I can't say for sure, but my experience is that it's not a great idea. Mm, yeah. And I, I'm thinking, cause because obviously you said you didn't really experience detox symptoms. See, I'm yeah. thinking that's because um, obviously you ate enough. Because often when people like transition, <laughs> they don't eat enough, and then yeah. obviously you're on a calorie deficit, so you're that's gonna right. feel your hormones are gonna feel rough. Exactly. Um, so how how did you how did you get in like enough um, in the early stages? Because obviously your stomach uh, elasticity Correct. might not have adapted. Did you have to eat like more little meals or? Dude, my appetite is crazy. Like yeah. I can eat five thousand calories a day. Like. No problem. Easily. If I had the time, if I had the time, then I can I can do that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Fair so enough. for me, yeah, eating enough for me has never been a challenge because I feel like no matter how much I've ever eaten, I could always eat more. You know? mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. it's not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, but well, I have a fast metabolism and I'm I'm active. Um. So even if I eat like, let's say I, cause I can eat too much in one sitting. I don't like to eat too much at one time and get too full, but mm. my, the way my metabolism is I can eat and I can be full. And then two or three hours later, I'm like ready to go again, you know? Mm. So, yeah. And I guess obviously having that amount of muscle mass, you naturally burn more calories at rest. I think that's, that's, true. that's what people are kind of a bit scared. They don't want to get like, they don't want to build some lean muscle, but they don't realize yeah. then they'll be able to eat more. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So. So you're six four, right? Uh huh. Yeah. So yeah. that's definitely gonna burn some calories at rest. Exa yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, just exactly. even existing. <laughs> Except, yeah, exactly. You know, what I weigh, like with what I weigh, mm. I should to be the size that I really, where people would be like, Jesus, you know, I would need to eat like probably like five thousand calories a day. -ish. Wow. Yeah. 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 And obviously you said you got a busy schedule. I know you got the YouTube channel, you got various different other endeavors and you got yeah, kids. Yes, tra right, and training as well. Uh -huh. That's what I do. So yeah, yeah. There's and there are other little endeavors on the internet that I that I'm doing as well. So Yeah. So how do you fit all that in? Do you feel like yeah, how do, are there any like time saving tips? Because there's a lot of busy people who kind of use that as an excuse to make it yeah. work. So true, yeah. Smoothies. Honestly, like smoothies have mm. you know, smoothies are so simple, especially like there are some fruits that are really time consuming to eat. And then there are other fruits that are much faster. Like I don't like eating apples because it takes yeah. too long. It takes so long. Like how do you eat a meal of 10 apples? Like it takes too long. Right. Yeah. So, no, totally. um, but so I throw apples in the, in the blender, you know, if I'm going to have apples, um, I actually, I have this weird smoothie that I love. That's green apples and celery. And I don't know if I'm crazy, but if you guys haven't tried that, then it's, it's a good one. So I think, uh, um, yeah. but yeah, smoothies, um, intermittent fasting helps me a bit. Like I used to eat six meals a day and, uh, cause that was the old, the old saying, you know, so I eat six meals a day to build muscles. So I did that for years. Um, but yeah, just have smoothies, choose fruits that are, that you can eat faster, like papaya, you can eat fast melons. You can eat pretty fast mangoes. Um, I mean, like easily chewable, really juicy fruits are easy, but also like um, dates and bananas. If we throw them in a smoothie, they're really fast too. Mm. So just faster fruits. Don't mm. chew apples, I guess. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, it takes me yeah. like ten minutes to eat one apple. It's exactly. Crazy. Exactly. 
yeah so yeah you said um you used to eat like six meals a day and i know that's like big like bodybuilding culture like <laughs> eat every two and a half three hours for like muscle yeah. protein yeah. synthesis and optimal like anabolic state yeah. like how how um yeah so you said is it like three meals now and like how how have you found since like intermittent fasting any differences building muscle or? i was shocked that no no i kept making broad reps um, I do now it would be like three meals if I get hungry and I didn't have like a big enough meal then I'll have a fourth mm -hmm. um, but I fit it all in from you know the afternoon to to I'll probably like usually I try to keep it about eight hours but I'm not religious about that right if it's 10 hours yeah. then it's okay um, and I'm trying now to not eat right before bed so because you sleep better right especially like if you're eating raw food then the water content so if I have to wake up to go to the, the bathroom, it's it's not ideal. Yeah. Um, but what's your question again? Did I answer it? Yeah, you did. Yeah, I was just um, asking if you've noticed any differences since like fasting compared to like eating constantly. Yeah, as far as building muscle, like I've kept building muscle and I was really shocked by that, honestly. Mm -hmm. And what's like your approach to training? Obviously you said four days a week and you're split, but is it mainly um, like free weights? Is it body weight Like what, or mixed? Like a mix yeah a mix of everything so free weights body weights i mean everything um my training approach differs from so i'm really obviously i'm a certified trainer so i'm really familiar with the science behind training but i've also been training since 2002 and science didn't come into the picture until way after i started training like they weren't saying anything about training until schoenfeld came along and started doing these studies and reporting them on, on training. And then people are like, oh, this is what you're, well, you know, we figured it out way back. Like a lot of guys figured it out before I did how to get, you know, how to build muscle and how to get lean and everything. And, and so um, my approach to training is, like I said, so I just wanted to give a disclaimer. It's different than what, you know, if you follow the science, it's a little bit different, a little bit different in that I keep my rest periods short. So they're 45 to 60 seconds and that's between every set. Because, and that's a preference thing. I, I like to be puffing and puffing in, the, in a hypoxic state when I'm training. I don't, I don't want to be sitting and like I'm fully recovered and I'm waiting for the timer. Like yeah. I get bored, you know, I don't feel like I'm working out. So um, I just like the feeling of like sweating and my heart rate being up when I train. So I do that and then I do high volume. So I train, every muscle gets at least 20 sets. So I'll do maybe five exercises four sets a piece and that's 45 to 60 seconds between each one so you can imagine like it's quick it's really quick and you feel muscle gets so full of blood and so pumped and it just feels good it feels really good to circulate your blood and you're breathing deep the whole time you know because you're like you know and um except i breathe through my nose and not through my mouth because it's my dad told me that a long time ago but anyway um so it, yeah that's how i like to train it's a little bit different than what science is saying you know to do now but it works you know mm -hmm. yeah. how do you feel about training to like muscular failure like what was your approach do you do you go when you physically can't um do another rep or yeah what's... yeah yeah um i mean it depends it depends on the exercise it depends how i feel it depends like let's say okay if i do one exercise and i'm doing four sets for the most part the last two are pretty much to failure, right? And so they're pretty much to failure, but maybe not exactly all the way because I don't like whenever it gets so, like you get to a point in a set where you can't even feel the muscle anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. you can't feel it. So I, like, so I don't really like to push through that point um, unless I can still feel it. But I train really, really, really hard. Like it's, it's not, I'm not cape walking through it. It's really... You know, it's really hard. I'm grinding out those last reps on those last two sets. But I'm, I may stop a little bit shy of failure, or I may not. And it might be weeks that I do and weeks that I don't. Um, so it just, it kind of depends. But mm -hmm. I just, I believe in training really hard. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and do you feel like there's a law of diminishing returns? Like once you hit a muscle like so much, like it's just creating unnecessary fatigue? Like For sure, yeah. 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 yeah um, where that is, I think varies depending on where you're at, um, mm. how hard you're training. 
because I've seen, I mean, I've done up to 40 sets for about like for a long time, I did 40 sets for just my chest. But that was, and it worked really well. Like it worked really well. And it was no, that was with no weights. I was doing like just push ups and dips, just calisthenics. But my chest grew, even though I had up until that point been lifting weights. Um, but you know how a lot of times people who bench press a lot, they get shoulder issues. And the push up is a more natural movement. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do that. And I was doing, you know, 40 sets with like a 30 second rest period between each one. And I was just, I would like strap on a backpack and then just do like, eight to 10 different kinds of push-ups and, and dips. And that worked, right? So a lot of different things can work. Mm, yeah, awesome. How have you found like body weight skills? Obviously, because you're a tall guy, you're you're like pretty heavy by most people's standards. Like, because um, I know a lot of tall people struggle with calisthenics and body weight stuff. So how, how do you personally find it now? I think that's an excuse. Like if you struggle <laughs> with it, that just means you need to do it more, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I never could, like, back in school, I could never do as many pull-ups as a, as a shorter guy who weighs, like, 160 or 150 or 140 or something. Like, no way. Um, so, like, even now, if I try to, if you, like, do as many pull-ups as you can, the way I do them is, is different if I'm trying to build my back. But if it feels like do as many as you can. I remember the last time I officially got, um, I, I had to do, like, a test. Right? It was on rings, though. It wasn't on a, a pull-up. Oh, bar. yeah, it's harder. And I only did, I did 13. That was it. So, which is not impressive, you know. <laughs> yeah, but when, when you're pulling that kind of weight up. It's you know, a lot of weight. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And do you have like a favorite meal or something? Like just say you've done a hard workout or, or whatever yeah. and you're like, there's one thing you could have. Is it a favorite meal or recipe you could have? I mean, I guess it depends if I want savory or sweet. Because mm. um, I like bold. I, huh, favorite meal. Well, maybe right now, maybe I do. I think my right now my favorite like post workout would be the the sounds stupid, but just coconut date rolls from Sprouts <laughs> and uh, that are cold out of the refrigerator because they taste like dessert. And I right now I really like this, and I just discovered it. So, yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah, I think I think people um they don't realize like basically every meal can be like a dessert on this lifestyle if you want. That's so like, true. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, definitely. So how do, well, how do you feel about dates? Do you eat them like dry quite a bit, or do you put them in smoothies, or have you noticed any like teeth issues? The teeth thing. I know you're gonna say the teeth thing. Um. So I have to shout out. Uh, I think it was Julian Barry, who said something about because I always brush my teeth after I eat, mm -hmm. but she said with dates don't do that. And, um, and when she said that, I was like, oh, that makes sense. And so when I eat, I do eat dates, just, you know, I'll just eat them. But when I eat them, I eat them, like, I don't mess around. I eat them as kind of as fast as I can. I'm not rushing, mm -hmm. but I, I, I eat them. I don't take a break. And then when I'm done, I, I wash my mouth out with water, like, really well. And I'll wait about 30 minutes, and then I'll brush my teeth. Um, and another thing that I found that helps is if you eat greens with them. So if you have like dates yeah, and that also resets your taste. So every date feels like the first one. Um, <laughs> but you can't just stop and eat greens between every day. It's too, uh, they're too good. But, uh, but yeah, if you have like some greens, they help to kind of get that, you know, all that sugary stuffiness out of your teeth. Mm, so, cause I have had sensitivity before years ago. Uh huh. Sure. But you found that helps and there's no like issues at I all. I haven't, I eat them every day and I haven't had it in, you know, well, the past two years I haven't had it at all. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. And how do you, how do you like, I think the mindset's a huge part. Like how do you, um, how do you stay like on track? Cause you've got all these distractions, all these like things taking up your time and what a lot of people would use as excuses maybe like yeah maybe not as much sleep as other people and things like yeah. that like like right now you're up past midnight <laughs> filming a podcast like how yeah what what any habits or things to keep your mindset right any tips for people yeah for sure like well the biggest thing is eating healthy if you're eating a raw lifestyle i mean that's another thing when you get out of bed you can feel the difference mm. you know, if you if you really eat clean living foods then when you get out of bed even if you've had maybe you're used to eight hours of sleep a night maybe you only get six but on a raw lifestyle you get out of bed and you're like actually i feel good you know sure like the, the rest of the sleep but i feel good you know mm. so 
Um, and another thing I'd say, like, if you're if you have something to look forward to in in that day, if you really look forward to something, you're not going to be tired. I mean, we really do. We have the, all this energy inside. It's like potential, and it's passion and desire that brings that out. Right? When you have like a strong desire and a passion for something, you can sleep four hours, three hours, and you're you have energy. So I think a lot of it is like purpose. Um, obviously, the healthy diet. You know, working out helps. A good mindset helps because the mind burns up so much energy. If you if you have a negative mind or you have like negative thoughts. It burns a lot of your energy. You don't need as much sleep if you're if you're a really positive person. You don't need as much sleep. Um, I don't know if there's a scientific you know study about that, but I I guarantee it's true. Mm. Um, so yeah, just a, a positive mindset, passion, purpose, and a healthy lifestyle. Mm, 100% great tips and yeah I'm not sure about specific studies but I know there's probably a lot of science behind it because if you're in a stressful state if you're in a like a catabolic state all the time you're going to need more rest to recover like right. I know people like sad guru um, I think he uh-huh. said for 25 years he was just sleeping like four hours a night or something there um, were yeah I know of a guru right now that you know sleeps three four hours a day she's like 70 something she has no wrinkles yeah but she has she has so few thoughts and um ama her name is ama and she she has like so few thoughts and her thoughts are positive thoughts so she doesn't this is what burns up like it's just, it's so crazy chess players burn like a yeah. thousand calories an hour like that's crazy when i learned that i was like wow that's yeah. like what i burn or more when i'm working out for an hour they're mm-hmm. sitting and they're thinking so much that they're burning all that energy and so that really made me realize i'm like okay like the mind uses a lot of energy Mm, for sure yeah and were there any influences for you like on your mindset with your parent like with your parents like or inf- uh, any influences that have helped instill that like because it seems like you've got a really positive mindset and just a, a cool demeanor you know like i appreciate that man you too by the way um but no my parents no <laughs> I, so i'm from a small town in louisiana for anybody who knows like louisiana is a little it's in the south like the south the deep south and uh, I'm from a tiny town, so nobody there's heard of a vegan. You know, say, so what's a vegan? Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's like that. And my mom passed away when I was 16, and my dad actually didn't raise me. He left when I was like two or three or something like that. So, and my mom, when she was here, she was so busy that I didn't get much of her. So this is something that happened from 2010 my when i had my awakening right and so that was january 1st of 2010 which led to i mean it's just it's 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 a whole different video honestly it's a lot but it led me down a road of um understanding the mind it led me down a road of taking full responsibility for everything that happens in my life um and yeah i don't i don't know there's too much to to go too many ways to go with that but But it was a spiritual awakening. That's what led me down the path. And, you know, I've read a lot of books. I've done a lot of courses. I've been to some retreats. Um, And so I've done, like, inner work. Mm. Yeah, I think think that's the work that, you know, for many people, it's it's very difficult. Like, for all of us, it's difficult to do the inner work. But, but yeah, it's, you know, the the, the fruits of your labor, once you've done that kind of work, it's just amazing. Yeah. So so it was like a later on thing in life, like, that you kind of just discovered through your own... Yeah, your own efforts. No, I, I can't even take credit. I, well, I <laughs> guess ultimately is my own efforts, but it, the awakening thing was just like yeah, a miracle. You know, it was just like one of those things that that happens where something happened to me, and I was just going about my business, you know. But something happened to me that um, it just showed me that there was like another sign. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I was like, whoa. And at the other side, it was there with me. And, um, yeah, it's, it's really weird. I don't know. <laughs> it's really strange. No, no. But, but, uh, but yeah, it's ever since, uh, since 2010, I've had um, my intuition, like, speaks. It actually, like, like, I hear it speak. And it's what's led me down a healthy, like, it's never steered me wrong. It's always told me to stop 
gently, not ordered me, but told me like gently and lovingly to stop things that are destructive, to right things that I'd wronged, and to evolve as a person. Mm, absolutely. No, it doesn't sound weird at all. Like a couple of years ago, um, you know, when I went like fully raw for the first time, I think my dad gave me a book um, called Man's Higher Consciousness. I read that and then I went, I went on raw foods and yeah, that was kind of like a, you know, you can call it like spiritual awakening. Like, um, I, I know people overuse the term, but that's all I can describe it as like, just like a wow. switch flicked and yeah, Neat. it's, it's wow. amazing. Your dad gave you that? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's cool, man. Oh yeah. yeah. He, it's amazing. Like so it'll probably just pull out like a random book that's like really deep <laughs> and, and, and he's known about it for like decades, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Now the time is right then. But yeah, are there any like um, <laughs> spiritual? <laughs> I'll hold fire. I'll hold fire for a this second. Is my, this is my new. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. No, I'll, all stuff, good. I'll stuff them in. Okay, no, stop. no, it's all good. I don't want any ear damage. <laughs> um, are there any like spiritual practices, or I know it's quite a cliche term, but are there any things you personally do just to cultivate that like connectedness within yourself? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, before I say anything on that, I have to say like. I get busy. I'm in LA. I'm not from LA. I'm not even the biggest fan of LA, but right now LA is where I'm, where I am to take care of things. Right. And so it works for me now. Um, I'm, I love nature. I love to be in places with a lot of nature that are quiet, quiet, not too quiet, but quiet. Um, and so yeah, my, my practices, I try to keep them like front and center all the time and sometimes you know life happens um but i you know i always come back to them and i try to do i don't try to do something every day the number one thing would be i mean i want to say meditation but it's more than meditation it's like awareness it's like um presence like present moment awareness <clears throat> being it's basically like if i'm sitting here right now like we're having a conversation if i'm in my head, like when you're talking, if I'm like thinking, I'm missing the moment, right? So present moment awareness is just being present without that, you know, this going on, um, which, which happens a lot. It's, it happens easily because um, we have so much to think about. Hmm. But practicing presence by stopping whatever you're doing, if you can stop and just be present, just notice whatever you can notice the sensations in your body the, you know the sounds around you and and whatever it is the wind on your face or you know whatever it is that you can that you can notice maybe your food in front of you um but being present and if you meditate and you're present when you meditate then it's a good thing if you meditate and you're just up in here then it's not it's not really meditation so i'd say that um and pranayama which is breathing exercises um so those those two things would be my my one and two for sure mm, they're awesome yeah so let's <laughs> say like someone they're having a conversation then their mind's like taking them to what they're gonna have for dinner they're like oh, i think yeah, oh, i gotta yeah. do this what yeah, should they do yeah. then just return just get back to the present moment and just yeah yeah with with like love and grace for themselves to mm. you know what i mean like not like in a like wow like why am i thinking this yeah. and not beating themselves up because we can do that but that yeah. just just getting back to the present moment as much as possible. And this is something that's, a, it's a daily thing. It's not, you don't do it for a month and then you're like an expert. It's like, you have to keep doing it, you know? Mm, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And have you like, obviously you've, you've got your like children, like have you kind of encouraged that kind of, those kind of oh, yeah. practices and things with them? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. For sure. They, they meditate my, my goodness, my oldest son started meditating when he was like two. Wow. Yeah, something like two or three or something like that. And that wasn't because I made him. It was just, he just wanted to meditate because he's, you know, he would see me meditating. So he was like, I'm going to come meditate with him. So he'd come and meditate and just a natural thing. Okay. Nice. And do you have to, yeah. Oh, go do ahead, you make, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, do you make food for them as well? And you like, you, yeah, you. Yeah, so they're they're not totally raw. They have been, they have been at times, but they are plant based. They've been plant based for the entire time I was because the last straw for me was watching Earthlings, and that's when I immediately went vegan when I saw Earthlings. I'm sure you've seen it. Um, 
And after that, I was like crying for like an hour and I just couldn't ever eat meat again. <laughs> and so, uh, but I watched it with my children and some people are like, oh my God, you want to eat children? <laughs> but I'm not a parent that, you know, hides the truth of the world. I mean, I, I just reveal it in certain stages, um, but I didn't know exactly how graphic it was going to be. <laughs> but so, so we watched that and, and I asked them after the movie, I was just like, well, you know, I'm not going to eat meat anymore. I'm not eating any animal products. And, um, and I asked them if they wanted to, and they said yes. And ever since they have, but at this point they're repulsed by animal products. You know what I mean? They think it's just, it's so yeah. unnatural to them to see a dead piece of flesh. You know, it's, just, it's very unnatural for them. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, for me, it was more um, the like athletic performance and sports side of things. Like I watched Game Changers um, wow. nearly six years ago. And yeah, that oh, wow. resonated for me. And I was too much of a softie to watch any of the ethical um, yeah, like, yeah. on the slaughterhouse footage or anything like that. But I, I, yeah. I knew what was going on. I didn't need to see it. I, uh -huh. And now the ethical yeah. side is like, I'd never go back for the ethics yeah. alone. But yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Has it been six years since Game Changers came out? Yeah, I think it was 2018. I think wow. Ne I think nearly six years. I think I've been vegan okay. five and a bit, so not not too oh, long. Wow. But but you know, yeah. it was a, it yeah. was weird enough. Was it weird yeah. for you socially? Like when you made the switch, any like <laughs> yeah. anyone kind of yeah, everyone yeah. becomes a health expert. Everyone becomes a health expert, especially if you have kids. Like oh, it's great. Like if you have kids, then it's just like well, what they don't eat this. Well, how do they get this? And how my kids get the question. Like my son just got the question the other day, where do you get your protein? Mm. And so it's, you know, we all get it. Um, but for me, I'm so much more knowledgeable than the average person around me. And everybody that knows me knows that. So everybody that knows the people that know me also know me. <laughs> so I don't get asked as much, you know, only by strangers. And I get, I get funny looks, you know, when I go to the store and I get so much fruit, you know, people are just like, oh my God, I think... Um, the other day at the store, a guy said something about too many bananas can give you like radiation poisoning. And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, everyone else here has like frozen dinners in their, in their cart. You know, it's just like, mm. it, it'll be okay. It's just a banana. But, uh, but yeah, so we get, we get those sort of things and we just approach it with, you know, people don't know. They just don't know. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And, yeah. And if worse yeah. comes to worse, you can always just pick them up and, bicep curl them or something <laughs> I, you know what i like to i i wish i was 40 already because once i like people the way people's minds work is like yeah. when you get to a certain age you're old now so once i hit 40 it's like okay you're old but wait you're still young like mm -hmm. how how are you doing this so i want to be 40 just so i can be like okay like do you want to listen you know and some people do some people already listen a lot of people listen of course but but um, yeah, it's, I let people be where they are and I don't try to force anything on, on anyone. Um, even though sometimes I, I want to, like when I hear young people doing the carnivore diet and we're talking and they tell me that they're on the carnivore diet and I'm like, but yeah, what can you do? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, all you can do is just keep making the content and putting out the information that you're doing, and yeah. you can lead a horse to water, but you, you know that's you right. Can't, you yeah. can't force it to drink. That's yeah. yeah that's it's frustrating at times, though, isn't it? When you see it people is. like you know self-inflicting problems, like, but yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you just got to yeah. put out the information, and exactly. you know, you, if if they if they can't look at you and see that it's clearly working, then you know they're denying reality. So that it's you know, it's up to them. Yeah, it's interesting. Like a, a person doesn't see outside of their own consciousness. Yeah. So even though you might be looking like a lot of people, they look straight at me and they're like, oh, but I can't do that. And I have to do this because X, Y, Z. And I'm just like, you know, so we see through our own mind, right? We don't see objectively, we see subjectively. So um, when it's time. You know, when it's time for people is when they, when they do things. And just like with me, like I first saw veganism in 2010, but it took seven years to get there. So if I can get there though, I think everybody can get there. Mm. 
yeah absolutely because yeah. yeah that's the thing we've got respect where people are on their journey because like when my sister went vegan like nearly 10 years ago i used to take the mick out of her i used to like laugh at yeah i, I was the biggest <laughs> proponent of meat but it's just oh, like that's ma- funny. it's like macho yeah. ego you know i yeah, was just young and it's... just repeating like what i'd heard but yeah, yeah. i think yeah yeah, there's times where it just resonates. Maybe someone is at that right stage in their life and then it just mm. resonates. Exactly. Well, the same thing with like raw veganism. I think veganism will resonate. And then when you're supposed to be raw, like you'll feel the pull to go raw. A lot of people, they they want to go raw because they'll see, like they, they see someone like me. Like I'll use myself for an example. And they're like, oh, if I go raw, I can be like you. And... It's like, I mean, you can be, you know, the best yourself, of course, right? You can't be like me necessarily, but if you go raw and you're not, it doesn't feel right for you. If you're not ready, if you don't have the discipline to make sure you eat enough, you know, which not saying that it's hard or anything, but if you don't have that kind of a mindset, if it's just not time, it's, it's not going to last, you know, I've seen that a lot of times. Mm. So trying to be like someone else is not the best reason to do something although having an inspiration is a is a great thing but um but yeah you have to it has to resonate with you it has to be time for you Mm, yeah absolutely yeah i think you've got to be doing it for the right reasons like you said you can draw inspiration from others and really like look up to them or a part of what they've done but then yeah ultimately we're all on our own journeys and yeah it's just yeah an individual path yeah and um just one more thing on like the social side um, do you ever like eat out or yeah go out with friends or the social side like of course, how have you yeah. dealt with that because a lot of people um, yeah they're worried about it's, that yeah I'm not gonna say that it hasn't been tough at times um, mm. with not so much being vegan but with being raw because family members like pressuring me and like feeling hurt sometimes if I turn certain things down mm. um, so there have been some times where like I ate some something cooked out at a restaurant just to appease like my sister or something you know what i mean um but you know i'm in a place now where i'm i'm just like you know it's okay for me to say no you know your feelings might be hurt today but you'll be okay you know because i didn't really i didn't really hurt you um but yeah so it's it's actually the first thing is you have to know why you're doing what you're doing if you have to have a good reason to do why you're, you're doing what you're doing because then it'll give you the confidence to politely, you know, turn down. Because, I mean, these are people that you love that are trying to pressure you sometimes. And if you are really, you know, your heart is set on, this is why I do this. This is what I do, and this is why I do it. Then it's it's much easier. If you're kind of a little bit, um, how can I say, like, if you can be swayed, then you will be swayed. You know, you really have to be set on it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And if you stand for nothing, then you stand for everything. Like, you, yeah, you know, you, yeah. you got, yeah. What, what's your like, um, I know you've alluded to it earlier, but what's your kind of reason why, why do you choose to just keep up these healthy habits every day? Like, what's your driving force? That is a good question. Yeah. My, so I told you my mom passed when I was 16 and she passed from cancer. She got cancer, um, malignant melanoma of the eye when I was 11. And she was supposed to live for five months, but she lived for five years. She passed when I was 16. And I blamed myself for a while when she passed away for no logical reason, but that's just what people do sometimes. Um, And I always wanted to save her. I always wanted to, you know, after she was gone, I wanted to figure out the way that I could have saved her and then pass that on. So for me, the first thing was that I didn't want, I watched my mom suffer like for a, for a long time. I watched her health decline and she really suffered. I mean, she really, really suffered. So to not have to have that repeat, right? By educating myself on health, educating my family on health, um, and so everyone, even if they don't eat exactly like I do, they, they know a lot, you know, uh, they have to, I won't let them not, you know, uh, but yeah, it's, it's the health side of things that keeps me going. And it's the ethical side of things, um, that keeps me going both of, both of those, the fact that 
unnecessary suffering. We can't evolve as a species past a certain point if we keep inflicting unnecessary suffering on beings. It's just, it doesn't have to be there. Um, so that, and then the health side of things. I want to be healthy. I want to live. I don't want to necessarily live forever, but I want, while I'm here, I want my body to be youthful the entire time. And I look up to the people that are 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, that are still kicking, kicking butt. And, uh, and those are my, my inspirations, you know? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you sharing that. And yeah, hey. it, it definitely, when you look at it, it definitely resonates on a number of levels. Like maybe we enter for one reason and then once we're making these choices, we look at it and realize it just positively impacts like every aspect <laughs> of our lives. And yeah. yeah, like you say, the planet, like it's, yeah, yeah. it's amazing. Um, hey. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard because like, like we alluded to earlier, sometimes it, it, you have to resist the the urge to get frustra uh, frustrated because, like, yeah. you know, you've got the knowledge, you've got the information, yeah. and and maybe people aren't receptive. But yeah, yeah I think I think um, just just you know, being the shining light, walking in your truth, and just yeah, I think that's gonna do the most, have the hey. most impact, and inspire hey. the most people. It's um, not what you say; it's what you do exactly yeah. exactly because if you're saying like the lifestyle is really good and then you're just laying on the sofa it's not it's, it's not the best exactly. advocate for it yeah so is that is that like the main yeah. motivation for your channel like what what inspired um creating that a hundred percent one hundred percent um so yeah i started my channel and i just was like you know what i'm just gonna pose and i'm gonna tell people i'm gonna show people first of all like my i don't i'm not a big fan of like showing my physique but i always try to show some part yeah, yeah you have to you have to <laughs> because i have to so um so yeah so so that was it just to show people because i know how people are and i know that people are vain which is okay you know um so i i show it to draw them in and ideally they'll get into the lifestyle they'll feel good or they'll, they'll stay in the lifestyle because some people are in the lifestyle and they can be swayed because you have all of, like I was saying, I saw the rise of veganism in social media like sometime after I went vegan, I think not long at all after I went vegan. And I was like, whoa, this is awesome. And then I saw the rise in keto, paleo, and then carnivore. Carnivore came out of nowhere and I'm like, this almost seems like a, a uh, what, do you, what do you call it? It's like a, a something Fat weaponized or... against veganism. And I'm like, I, that's what I initially, I was like, how did this blow up so fast? It's crazy. It's like, I mean, people think veganism is restrictive. Like, this is the most restrictive diet on the planet. And uh, it goes against science completely. So, um, uh, but yeah, just to, I saw those people and I saw the vegans that were boldly speaking out, right? And being the example. And I just wanted to be another one. I figured if I could have my unique voice and the fact that, I'm, you know, I look the way that I do. Um, I thought that would be a good, a good thing. So I just wanted to get that out. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think that's great. I think being part of the solution rather than the problem is always going to be beneficial. Like, I, th yeah. I think it's really good. I think we need more people starting channels, even if you have an imposter syndrome and you feel like yeah. what you've got to share isn't valuable. I'm sure like it'll resonate with, with a bunch of people. Um, exactly. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. If you want, yeah, we'll dive in. Oh, no, go, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, okay. no. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, there, there's no shortage of imposters on the other side. I'll just say that because there are idiots. <laughs> 100%. On the, yeah. on the other side that are just spouting the dumbest lies that you can do a quick Google search and look up a scientific study and see that it's not true. And people swallow it and they, they buy into it. And that's where, you know, I was like, oh, no, I got I to gotta say something. So. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I think, and and the issue is that a lot of them change their um, their information and change their stance Don't every every month. Yep. Um, yeah. So yeah. Every two weeks. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I agree a hundred percent. But yeah, if you want, we'll dive into some uh, rapid fire questions. Let's do um, it. I appreciate it. it's pretty late for you. Um, oh, also, just a quick one. What's like your um, approach to supplements and things? Do you supplement at all? I take B twelve. I do a sublingual B12 and, and that's it. I, that's all I take. I get plenty of sun. You know, the sun's out every day here. 
Could we please get some clouds? No, I'm kidding. But uh, um, you're like, oh, that doesn't sound too bad. But uh, but yeah, I take B12 right now. I've taken other supplements, and my stance on supplements is that it's okay to supplement. You know, we're not usually, like I was saying earlier, most people, they go to the supermarket, and even if you're raw vegan, you have a limited access. You're not, if you're not in the tropics, what you have is a limited access. So you have to respect whatever you have the availability to get and realize that even the, the fruits and veggies that you're getting, they're not necessarily coming out of the best soil. They're, they've been washed so well, um, and it's not the way that you would naturally be eating. And that's the only reason why you may, you know, at some point need B12 or you may be lacking in certain other nutrients. Maybe it just depends, right? And it won't be because of the a raw vegan diet or a vegan diet. It may um, just be because of the, the farming practices, maybe because of the lack of variety that you're having. Um, so I, I'm a proponent of supplements for sure. Mm, yeah, absolutely. It's not, yeah. yeah, like you said, it's not a floor of the lifestyle. It's more a floor of our modern world. And yeah, exactly. I think, yeah, yeah B12 for sure. That's something I've uh, incorporated like, you know, the past year or so. Like, just def I definitely agree there. Because um, a, lot of, a lot of people, you know, it's based on dogma, like in a belief system, yeah. which is great, but things have changed since our like tropical roots. So yeah, yeah. exactly. Just a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We wouldn't be talking to one yeah, another. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Right. So um, I'll just pull up the rapid fire questions. Um, so yeah, obviously just try answer as fast as you can, but if you need more time, feel free to elaborate. Let's do it. Awesome. Um, what's your favorite fruit? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> right? At the moment, my favorite fruit is mangoes. Awesome. Yeah, I love mangoes. Are there any particular variety you get there? Uh, I just kill whatever they have. Or if it's organic and it's right, it's, no, it's it's all just mangoes. They don't even have like the selections of different yeah, yeah. ones like that now. If it looks like a mango and tastes like a mango, <laughs> then... <laughs> it's a mango. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, what is, oh no, describe yourself in one word. Oh, love. Hmm. Nice. What is one book that everyone should read? God, these are hard questions. Okay. Uh, the Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Dobelshin. Awesome. Um, what three things that you can't live without? My children. Uh, love. <laughs> and uh music yeah nice yeah and for anyone who didn't didn't listen earlier what's that edm r&b and hip-hop yeah it's well if i'm not dancing it might include uh uh like alternative soft rock um but yeah those those would probably be my my go-to's yeah nice what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received Oh, okay. It was from like a second mother before she passed away. And um, she said, I'll give you her exact quote. She said, I was going through something with some girl. And I was like, I don't know what's going to happen with this girl. You know, I'm worried and like, but whatever. And she said, honey, things usually turn out better than you think they will. And it's always been the case. Mm. Yeah, it's very true. It always yeah. seems to matter so much at the time yeah. and then yeah in retrospect yeah. exactly <laughs> definitely exactly. uh what's your greatest strength and what's your biggest weakness my greatest strength is my heart um i care right and my biggest weakness is my how can i describe it i know it's my uh i don't know if it's a strength or a weakness but my like optimism can be to a point where you know what i mean it can it can be a double-edged sword yeah 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 like delusional optimism but yeah. I, I think that's good i think i still think it's it can good, be it can. yeah yeah definitely um do you believe in having a purpose if so what's your purpose in life a hundred percent yeah i think like the biggest thing that makes us happy the, the most important thing that a person can do is find out their purpose um because without purpose, you're, in my opinion, right, this is just my opinion, you're basically dead. Without purpose, I think you're like a walking zombie. 
Um, and so, yes, and my purpose is to, to spread what I've been learning since 2010, to spread the, the realization that everything is one. I know it's going to sound cliche, guys, but this is just my trip, okay? So just to preface, um, that everything is one, that our core nature, we are loving, happy beings. We're all the same. We're not, you know, we don't have these, these differences that divide us are an illusion. They're not true. Um, yeah. And just to, to spread that message of the truth about humans that, you know, these, these things that we think divide us are all, they're just, they're lies. They're, they're BS. Mm, absolutely. And yeah. finally, what are you grateful for today? I'm grateful for this interview. Yeah. I'm grateful for this interview. I'm grateful for my children. Um, I'm grateful for my health. I can go on. I'll stop there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we haven't yeah. got two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah where, where can people um, get in touch with you? What have you got going on? Like, feel free to share. So, okay, I've got my YouTube channel from me, Head to Meatless. I've got my uh, Instagram. I'm less active on Instagram because they deleted my other profile. So ever since, I lost everything. <laughs> and um, so that's been a few months that I've been kind of, you know, I need to build it back. I had a little bit on there. Um, but I just have to have the motivation of posting. And it's just like, I kind of feel like they might rip the legs out from under me again. Mm. Um, so it's kind of hard to be motivated to, to post on there. But I do DM a lot there. Uh, so Instagram, same name, for me to the meatless. Um, people can email me at for me to the meatless at gmail.com. And I have a new community on school, which is for, you know, it's for uh, raw and high raw vegans. And it's just going to be a place where people can meet, network. I'm going to be going live and doing like Q&As um, and just giving away free stuff. My ebook is free there on how to go vegan and build muscle, lose fat, whatever you want to do. Uh, and there'll be more of that. There'll be more like free courses I'm making, um, just lots of free stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I'll put all the links in the description. And yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate your time. Um, it's been an amazing conversation. I appreciate everyone listening this far and yeah, just wishing everyone a wonderful rest of your day and yeah, peace and love everyone. Thanks.